she I'm the she I'm the she, baby Awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming in. It's great. Thanks for having us. So, uh, Pete, tell us how you got this band together. How did it all get started? <clears throat> um, hello. This started, um, I got a call from the guys at Humble Pie, which is a restaurant here in Raleigh that we play at the first and third Wednesday of every month. Um, but it was uh, Obama's inauguration night, and they wanted a band to celebrate, uh, you know, inauguration night. So I called Mark, who I play with all the time and who I love, and called George. I called Steven, and actually I called Mr. Al Strong, who's not with us today, because his teeth were pulled, so we have Lucian Cobb with us. But I, I made this, uh, put this quintet together, and we tried it, and it was a huge success, and they loved it at Humble Pie, and they said, well, why don't you guys come back and play? And we're like, okay, why not? And so that's how it started, and we've been going since. So a little bit more than a year. So how long between when uh, they called you and the first gig? I mean, how much time did you have to really practice and... I don't know, it was about a, a month, maybe? Yeah, something like that. About a month, yeah. We, we pulled our resources and arranged a bunch of tunes and came up with some neat stuff. You know, we, uh, during the, the, perform the uh, inauguration, they had, like, you know, it was projected on a screen behind us. And when he was done, we played Hail to the Chief, you know, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And then we just busted out, and people went nuts that night. You know, it was mm -hmm. a, a huge party. Mm -hmm. so. Now, how did you get started playing jazz to begin with? Um, I, my, 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 my stepfather, Bob Rogers, who owns a radio station here in town, Taint Radio, he is a huge jazz fan, and, and he kind of got me into it when I was in sixth and seventh grade. And George, who I went to middle school with, George, you want to do an interpretive dance for these guys? No, I'm all right. Oh, okay, okay. George, he also was way into, into 40s and 30s music way back then. And so George and my dad kind of influenced me, and then I, I took it from there. Okay, so when did uh, <clears throat> when did you form your first band? Um, that was again with George in high school, probably tenth grade. We used to go out to Couple Joe on Hillsborough Street and play in the corner for tips, mm -hmm. and we made decent money, you know, as kids. And then uh, our first gig was at uh, it was it was Wellspring back then, but it's now considered Whole Foods. We played Christmas songs, Christmas carols for about a week on the rafters above the meat department. Now, uh, pretty story. much. <laughs> all y'all are in different bands. I mean, you've got Atomic Rhythm All-Stars, you've got The Beast. How do you guys have time to really get together, practice, gig? I mean, it's got to be hard, isn't it? It's, it's very hard. Yeah, it's really hard to, to get uh, these five guys together because, like you said, everybody's playing all the time. I mean, Steven's in The Beast. Who's, they've been on this show. And Atomic Rhythm All-Stars is George's band. They've been on the show. And Luke's in that. And Luke's always on tour with somebody. And Mark's always playing with somebody. And um, it, it's, it's hard. It's, that's, that's just the way it is. But we make time, and mm -hmm. it's worth it. You know, they're a lot of fun to play with. They're great. Mm -hmm. So, Well, up to this point, you haven't actually released a, any albums, right? Not yet, no. Now, what's the plans for that? Um, we have one thing on the fire, which is uh, at the late, I think about a month from now, we're going to do a live. We want to do a live recording because I think we sound really good live. That's my opinion. But um, we want to do a live recording at Marsh Woodwinds on Person Street, and it's going to be invite only. Um, so, sorry if somebody shows up to this, but um, we're going to do a live recording there, and I've got a sound guy who's, who's ready to do it. We're going to have a keg of beer, and um, we're going to do, you know, we'll do like one song like four times to get it right. But yeah, it's going to be, um, it's going to be released probably a couple months after that. So maybe three or four months. What's the release plan for? Are you putting out digitally? Or are you going to put out CD, vinyl? I'm going to do CD, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to get rights to anything that's not ours. So it'll be, it'll be on iTunes, I think. Um, and we're going to give them out for free. I mean, I, I want people to hear the music, and it's kind of going to be like a business card. You know, if anyone says, what's your band sound like? Say, Here we are, you know, because um, CDs are kind of disappearing. You know, I mean, you, there's, everything is free now. So why, why charge it? Just, just as long as people like the music and they want to come, they want to hear us play, that's all I care about. Now, you just uh, you recently got back from New Orleans, like kind of the heart of American jazz, right? I did, yeah. Tell me about that trip. <laughs> that was an amazing trip. Um, my girlfriend Jessica and I flew down um, to the jazz festival um, the week, the week, kind of the week beforehand. And uh, I'm a repair person; I fix saxophones and flutes and clarinets. Um, and I was sent down there to work on horns uh, by Brand from Marsalis for one day. I got, to, I had to work for one day, and then I had like six days off. You know, we were right by the French Quarter. We had full access to Jazz Fest. We had backstage passes. It was ridiculously cool. 
And it was really inspiring. When we came back, we had a gig at Humble Pie, and I felt like I had so much music inside me to play. It was like it, it was really it was really a great trip. So now um, you 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 guys do play some covers, but you play a lot of original stuff, right? Um, we don't do as much original stuff as you might think. We do really obscure songs. Like uh, <laughs> the idea is, I mean, there's a lot of bands that do original stuff, and there's a lot of bands that do covers. I'd like to say we do arrangements of strange material that I think is neat. That first song was kind of a typical song, but we do, you know, Tom Waits, we do Russian Gypsy songs, we do Super Mario Brothers, we do Spider-Man. I mean, just whatever I think is cool, I want to play it, you how know? Do you, how do you inter interpret those songs? Like, how do you in interpret the Spider-Man thing into a jazz song? It's really cool. We make it into this funky uh, kind of dance, you know. It, it, we could do it for five seconds. <laughs> it's not on our list tonight, but but you could. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll maybe we'll, we'll play like the head of Spider-Man for you or something. But yeah, it's it's just you know, in all the bands I've been in, whether it's original or not, there's always been tunes that I've always wanted to do that I think are really neat. You know, and so we just take them and, and add our own spices and, and and serve it that way. You know.